today we're going to be grooming I'll be I'll be is quite fluffy this time got to be sure to penetrate all that hair Sure to get the ears and around your face. Don't get excited. There we go. Right. Get up under here, good. And your back end. Use some hypoallergenic shampoo on the pup. With a scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. Yeah, get that tail good. Boy, these tails get dirty sometimes. Yeah, get those feet good. <clears throat> Let's get the front of you. Scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. Calm down, calm down. All right. Now we'll get some tearless berry smelling. And we'll get your face good there around those ears I took the noose off so I get around his face a little better get in between his eyes real good there those tears really make stains in the little dogs get around your nose Seem to be pretty good and soaked. Let's get you rinsed off now, buddy. It's okay. Calm down. Calm down. There we go. Let's rinse this out of your eyes here, bud. Get him good and dry. Here we go. Just remember the drier you get them with the towel, the easier it is to blow dry them. One extra minute can save you several minutes with the dryer. And it kind of puts them at ease a little bit. Round your face good. There you go. Shake it off. All right, let's get you back and underneath here. All right, let's get you hooked up. It's okay. Get you locked in there good. There we go. Let's get all this stuff brushed good. 
he's pretty mad at here. But we'll do the best we can. Got to get that hair lined up so the clippers can get through it. A little bit of matting here on the back end. I think we'll use a five. I don't want to give him a shave down. So five is short, but it's not a shave down. Seven is short and a 10 is a, sh a shakedown, so we're kind of somewhere in between. And remember, flow with the hair. Ain't too much flowing going on here though, it's more removal. Anytime you hit a spot on a dog that's not brushed out, leaves just a little bit of a gap in the hair. I like them to be as smooth as possible. If this don't work, I'll go to a seven. But right now I'm with a five. Most of these mats are coming off of here where we've cleaned him good and, and uh, brushed him out. And, but I like long strokes, but it's hard to do long strokes when you keep hitting roadblocks. That's what I call them, roadblocks. And he's pretty matted in the back end, but uh, seems to be going through it. If it wasn't, I'd switch blades because I don't want to hurt the dogs at all. Yeah. Having a little bit of trouble here, but it's coming on off. Just taking a little longer. Side of that leg's pretty mounted up. I'll get that in a minute. And of course, right around the tail area is almost always mounted. If people would just take a little extra time to brush their dogs out, it would help so much. But if they're not brushing now, they're not going to brush when I tell them. So, and we're just sort of lightly skimming through that. Some of this I can get out with the brush, get the worst of it off. Here we go again. Not quite a pelt, but it is matted. If the dog's bad enough, I have no hesitation of getting a tin out and and uh, shaving them down because if it don't go if the hair don't go through the blade then it's got to go under it so I have to go under the hair with a lower cut now it's coming along but it's slow here that's why I charge more for matting it takes more time and energy and it's harder on your clippers and your blades. And if you get a super matted dog that's a pelt, you might as well just, after you're finished, throw that blade away because it, it will dull a blade. And the problem is you don't want to wash them when they're real matted because it just soaks up all that water. Now, well, Try and get at the base of the head, the ball of the head. Brush it back so that when I go through it, it'll be straight. And we flow with the hair. Flow with the hair. Which, whichever direction you're going, you flow with the uh, hair. And almost certainly the back of the ears are always matted. This is usually the worst spot. Those ears rub and rub up against their cheeks and stuff. And then they get matted. And people that use sweaters and harnesses and stuff, it will mat that hair in a minute. Shirts will mat the hair. 
All right. We'll try and meet these lines up with the back of the head to the front. So start right about the middle, come around to the side, and cut right into the worst part of that. When you have that much matting, you're you don't have time to brush it all out. It hurts the dog and it takes up time. It's not worth it. And I'm not going to hurt the dogs. I'm just not. Okay. A little bit of matting there. Go easy. You don't want to hurt them. Pulls on their ears. If I have to, I'll go to a lower blade. Right here is always tough. Especially around the armpits where the dogs work their legs. It just weaves that hair into a sweater. Just go slow. I could have used a 10 or a 5 and just cut right through this, but I like to leave the look of the dog if possible. Otherwise, they just look like a shaved dog with a head and a tail. As long as it's doing the job here. Another thing about when you're doing them and you're cutting through all this hair, those clippers heat up and you could burn yourself or the dog where they get so hot because they are metal. Now I use metal blades with ceramic and the ceramic Pushing against the metal is a lot cooler. Right, right here is under the arms. Those are almost always matted when you get a matted dog really bad. Sometimes I have to go to a lower size clipper. Lower size blade that is. And I'm not cutting through this. Just barely. This is my Moser, and we're going to get around the belly. And gently, I'm just sort of gliding just right above the skin to get some of that off. And you don't want to push on the skin or push real hard or anything because these are short. They start with a 10 and go up to a 30. 30 or 40, I can't remember. Uh, you want to touch the skin as little as possible and we'll get these mats out and always be sure that that blade is pushed all the way to the front okay I think I'm gonna go to a little bit lower blade there some of those spots. Most of the time I use a larger blade on the back of the legs so they don't look like they're walking on stilts. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you probably realize that I repeat myself. But I just have to keep pounding the point home. If you're a new subscriber, then this is the first time you've heard this information. Okay. Try and get around these feet. This is pretty matted. Still trying to press firmly and still be gentle. If I had spots that are too hard, then I'll go to a lower blade. I am not hurting the dogs. And get it off the back here. Now, 
I'm pushing or brushing the hair forward and then I'm going backwards with the clippers and that makes it pretty smooth and I'm going right into my thumb there see and we're getting right in the front of the nails there we go and we'll do this, this one the same way front of the nails and scoop got a scoop in there go forward go backward clean those pads out right up in the nails there scoop and scoop Go. Going right into my finger. It stops the blade. You don't want to keep going on up the leg. I go into my finger so that I got a smooth cut at the end of the pad. There we go. All right. Now, now that I got the hair out from under there a little bit, clip these nails. And I have a rule for nails, rather to leave them too long than to go too short. And you can work your way up until you see that little black dot in the middle of their feet, or in the middle of their nail, and then you stop. That's sort of the roadblock before you move forward. And you want to sort of even the nails right with the top of the pad. There we go. Never go too short. Bleeding nails can take some time sometimes to stop. I have quick stop that I use on them that clots that blood, but we don't want to do that. Nothing says losing a customer like a, a bleeding nail, so. There you go. Now, take that off. Okay, underneath I'm going a blade shorter. I always go a blade shorter under the legs than I do on the rest of the dog. You can't really see it that much. And it makes it smooth. And we do this with the front of the dog too. We get each side. And when you lift their legs up like this, you can get in, uh, around their nads a lot easier. You wanna be very careful of their little doggy parts. You don't wanna clip or hurt them in any way. And there. Now, I'm gonna brush this ear out good. Sometimes when they're matted like this, I can save their ears, sometimes I can't. And if I can't, that's not on me if you don't bring your dog in regularly or brush it. I can only do what the brush and the clippers tell me I can do. If they go through the hair, then they tell me that I can do it. If they don't, and I can't. I'm a slave to my tools. All right, let's brush these cheeks out good. Yeah, and we're hitting a few mats. Now, I'm just brushing on top of the, the dog's hair. I'm not pushing real hard. You know, you don't want to scrape their skin in any way. And I go back with a, a comb here, and it tells me where the mats are located underneath. And then I use this mat buster from Les Pouches, and uh, it'll cut right through that mat. So I'm going to 
brush them out good. Now, move the blade one click all the way up and then one click back. One click back so it doesn't cut too close. If you push it all the way up and trim around here, it cuts too close. So I come one click back, pull the hair back, and I just scoop in, in the valley here. Scoop in the valley. Right above the nose. And I think I'm going to leave these eyelashes. Has some cute eyelashes there. You want to scoop. Just scoop forward lightly and gently, not pushing, just sort of skimming. Scoop between the eyes. Brush all that out. Alright. Now let me get my curved shears here. My Kenchi curved shears. Because they have a curved face. Curved jaw coming up to the mouth. And trying to hold his head still. Brush the hair down. And we're going to make a half a moon right here. Just like we do on the tail. Just like we do on the ears. There we go. See how nice and circular that is. And this is what some groomers would call a puppy cut, a rounded face. I don't like real long beards on the Shih Tzu. I like a round face, but not cut too short. Just leaving some jaws in there. And there's a little bit of matting still underneath that jaw, but my scissors should just whip it off. Save me a little bit of brushing. There it is. And I'll try and even this ear up with this jaw right here. There we go. Nice. Alright, I brush it forward and then we curve it off. Right up into the curved jaw. I'm holding his mouth tight so he can't whip that tongue out and we'll clip the hairs on there. Being very quick and careful. Alright. We'll try to even this ear up with this jaw. There we go. dropping stuff all right now push this out a little bit make sure there ain't no mats here I skim through the top of their head and I use a four and just on just about every dog I use a four close but not too close roll with the hair glide off the ear you don't stop with the ear you glide off of it that way it blends in with the top of the head <clears throat> All right I come right up right up near the front there and we use scissors on the very front here in a minute Fold those ears back, and then I see I glide through the hair. I'm not pushing real hard. I'm gliding. I'm smoothing it off, evening it up. Some groomers just leave that hair there, but then their heads are too big. And you sort of want to blend them a little bit. Now, flow with the front here a little bit. Blend that in so it don't look like a visor. Okay, now I'm going to brush this forward and 
And I'm gonna make half a moon here. Sort of circular, coming around. Trying to be careful not to cut those eyelashes. Normally I hate eyelashes, but uh, this little dog's so cute with them. And he's getting a little wiggly. All right, now, smooth all that off good. Blend it in. Blend it in. I'm just skimming through it. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just skimming. Blend it right over the ears. Right. right. See how smooth that is? How good that looks? Even come to the front of the beard just a little. All right. Now we got Grinch feet. I hold the foot down with my hand. I'm holding his leg real hard against the uh, mat so he can't pick it up and I get a nice round half moon there. Now I turn it upside down and get underneath the part where the foot was pushing down. Make sure it's nice and round there and make this nice and round. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to get this one, brush it forward so all the hairs line up evenly, hold his leg down where he can't lift his foot up, and I can feel the tip of my scissors against the nail so I know where to stop. And underneath here, we'll get some of these wild hairs that he was pushing down on. There we go. Looks like I missed a spot. All right. We're going to do the front the same way. Brush it forward. Stand him up so he can put his weight on that foot, if he'll do it. There we go. Hold his foot down and make a half a moon all the way around it. There we go. Same thing, lift it up, hit those hairs underneath. straighten all this out. See a couple of hairs there. Gently gliding across. Round it up. Same thing here. That looks pretty good. Another wild hair. Okay. That foot, I see a spot that doesn't look right. It's irritating me. There we go. Now, got one foot to go. Push it forward. You know, that's how I can always tell when somebody grooms at home, they never get the feet right. The dog don't let them, let them mess with their feet. And they come in with Grinch feet and their pads are always full of hair. It's a dead giveaway. Now we're evening this up, nice and smooth. When I first started grooming, my grooming teacher told me, you know what, anybody can get a pair of clippers out, but this, the uh, magic is in the scissors. That's where the magic comes from. The clippers get the initial hair off, the scissors is where you get the style. There we go. Looking 
pretty good. Now, these ears are bugging me a little bit. Push it down, it will even those up. Sort of put it at a bit of a tilt. I don't like just flat, chopped off ears. It drives me crazy. The ears should reflect the jaws, you know. They should be slightly curved, starting from the back to the front. Go back here, and we'll do like we did on the jaws, see? That way it don't look just flat, like chopped off. Like a scarf around someone's neck. That's looking pretty good. Yep. See how even they are? Bring the ears up to the center of the head. Push them together from the nose up. Yep. And there's a few wild hairs. We'll just chop those off. Then we'll drop the ears. Take a look at them after I do that. Make sure they're even. And need a little bit of underneath the mouth there a little bit. Sort of smooth that where I had the clippers there. And the hairs on top of the nose. Another way you can always tell home grooming. Boy, those eyelashes really stick out. I normally hate eyelashes, but they're just so cute on this dog. Had to leave it. Yeah. Such a good girl. All right. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, one thing left to do here. Press this tail out. I don't like a big old flopsy tail. You don't want to dust mop walking around your house. It picks up everything. I'm going to make a half a moon here too. Come all the way up. Clip on this side. Like that. Then whip around to this side. Pull the hair out. Make the half moon even it up. Fold it back, see how it'll look once they raise their tail. Get those wild hairs. And I'll round this off just a little bit. Yeah. Typically the tail shouldn't be longer than uh, it shouldn't go pat if you pull it down to the table, it should just touch the floor, but Alright, we're almost there. There's a, a bleached hair from tears. I'm going to take care of that. Whip, you're gone. Alright, not looking bad at all. Yep, nice and smooth, nice and even, nice and balanced. Yep, looking pretty good to me. And a little on the ear. I could spend all day on these dogs, but you do the best you can in the time that's allotted to you. I do a dog an hour, and uh, I know about how much time to spend on them after all these years. I got it down to a little bit of a science, and it looks good underneath, in the front. There are no gaps. Let's get your picture. Picture time. Some dogs do real good for this. Others, it's hard to get them to look at the camera. This is a good little dog though, so I won't have any problem. Right. Make sure I 
lights are on. Whip the camera, try and adjust the focus in there. And 